everyone, my name is Rebecca. I'm a fish biologist, an ichthyologist, and also a PhD student. I specialise and study the evolution of lower card catfishes. So this video is going to be, I guess, another diet one. And I didn't think I'd have to make it because it doesn't... Um, it's not a topic I thought that would come up again, but it always comes up. It's a bit like tube effects. People are like, oh my god, tube effects will um, give my fish, like pollution sewage things uh, and bloodworm gets similar fear from it and it also gets a lot of love from uh, literally people buy them by the pack um, over every other frozen food you'll see people buy even if they're the same price they buy like tens of bloodworm and just that's all they're feeding almost it somewhat sometimes is cheaper i guess um, I'm not entirely sure why. I don't think it's as easy to farm e compared to like Daphnia or Tube Effects. But what is Bloodworm anyway? And some people, the name is just confusing anyway. Why is it called Bloodworm? It's probably just because of the colour. But Bloodworm is just a common name for chyma Chironomid larvae. So these are like midges, so flies. It's just fly larvae, aquatic fly larvae. That's all it is. It's not parasitic, it feeds algae on detritus. Sometimes it seems, so I think some of them might be associated with very clean water, but some of them not. Because I swear when looking at biological indicators, they were mentioned for clear, like clean water. I don't know, but others less so. Um, but the big thing is, is that many people sort of generalise bloodworm as one thing. There's loads of different species of bloodworm and no doubt there's a wide diversity in uh, what you're feeding, what you're buying. Notice that you get the really big ones that seem much thicker and the much smaller ones. I would say they're potentially different species rather than the same and just growing out. Um, because there is that wide diversity, so you can't kind of generalise this these larvae as one thing. And they are in the diets of many fishes. Almost, well, usually when you see a carnivorous uh, fish, it will be in there, or insectivorous. You see an algivorous or detritivorous fish, and there's a few invertebrates in their gut. It's usually these larvae, maybe a few nematodes and stuff. But usually this larvae in like ones or twos, so they are actually in the di diets of discus. They were recorded there, but then the diets of many other fishes, just not to high volumes in all fishes, and it really depends. Um, I think this taxa would be largely freshwater. There might be brackish ones, but they are found in many different fish diets. And obviously different species so different species of fish depending where you find them might feed on different larvae to what you're feeding at home so what to consider when you're feeding um bloodworm so i use bloodworm sort of very sparsely i don't it's not a main diet but it's an addition to a diet because it's not actually that bad and if you read the scientific literature, it's not great for growing fish out. It does depend on the species. Um, so it's not really the best for weight gain or colour. But it's not the worst and it does depend on the fish species. If you feed a piscivore, you might as well not bother. Um, Algivores and detritivores, minimal amount. So very little, like not even like two or something. Maybe one or something every so often. Um, but the main fear is it can be difficult to digest. So being an insect, being a crustacean, they have an exoskeleton and this exoskeleton is formed of something called chitin. And it really varies on species on that thickness of chitin. And this chitin will depend whether it can be digested easily. But a lot of people are assuming that the fishes are kind of eating them whole. And this really varies on the species, so you might see them sort of suck it in, but they might have an extra pair of jaws, and the majority of fishes, or a lot of fishes, have this extra pair of jaws which are crunching down things at the back of their throat. So, usually they'll be able to process them there, hence why you don't see whole bloodworms coming out. And it's a very different sort of digestion to what a lot of people assume. 
But these chitin levels will vary depending on the species. I have seen species produce species that is the whole bloodworm undigested. I have seen ones that uh, just like they've sucked out the body from the exoskeleton. Um, I don't think they have. I assume it. I don't know how. It's probably. Uh, but it can be difficult to digest. Is the answer really to this? It's not always difficult to digest. It depends on the bloodworm you're using, and the actual species of bloodworm or larvae might even vary by uh, country depending on our sources of getting it. Like in uh, the UK, we get ours from Europe generally. So I guess it would be the species of larvae found there unless they're farming them which might be a little bit more difficult to assume whereas in the US your sources are likely different and in Asia your sources are going to be different as well uh, and it's going to be different from what you probably find in your back garden just because of where they're farmed is just different areas in general so it's a bit difficult to say whether they're the same species and digestion will therefore vary so chitin levels will vary Fishes generally don't get bloat from it itself unless, like from bloodworm being bloodworm, unless they're fed the wrong diet entirely. So if they're an algivore, detritivore, so more herbivorous, and they're fed bloodworm, then they're probably not going to fare as well they, as, I guess, piscivores should manage. But it really depends on what you're feeding. But it's not like some massively difficult to die like it's not going to really bloat up a fish as easily but i think this digestion thing people will assume it's difficult to digest therefore it bloats the fish just because something's difficult to digest it doesn't mean it will cause bloat it depends on how it's difficult to digest whether it's causing something similar to like lactose intolerance um so but it might just pass through like sweet corn which i think is more usual if your fish is already bloated and there's limited space then you're kind of backing up the system so that's why i don't recommend that like, peas and stuff but that is kind of i guess that's quite detailed on the digestion so a big fear of blood is actually bacteria so people say oh they're full of bacteria they're really harmful firstly have you looked at your frozen food packet and it might say something called gamma radiated. So a lot of frozen foods are actually treated for parasites and bacteria. So they've been radiated by gamma. And that means that they're not going to have that bacteria that's going to cause infection or anything like that. But that's frozen foods. Live foods are obviously an entirely different story. And bloodworm is connected with... Um, different bacteria but all live foods almost you kind of have to sort of take an assumption or just be wary uh, tube effects I think is largely fine but I've seen all sorts on different uh, fo uh, live foods whether it be um, fish lice um, emit a predatory sort of beetle lar or beetles themselves I've never seen it I've seen fish actually in brine shrimp before, but there is going to be that wide diversity of different things when it comes to live food. It's just what comes with feeding something live. You can't radiate it. You can't treat it in the same way that you could with frozen. So obviously frozen safer. Maybe some sources don't, but maybe you should think about where you're sourcing your frozen food from. But bloodworm, I think, is not an entire diet. And therefore, there's so many different alternatives. And it's quite easy to find these alternatives. They're usually the same price. Vine shrimp, great high in protein. Usually, seem, I've never found a fish that finds it difficult to digest. Obviously, you're not going to feed like um, herbivores in high numbers. But brine shrimp's just great. It comes in really high densities as well. And you can culture it yourself. You could buy your own um, eggs for it. I never understand why people don't buy more brine shrimp. It grows out fish really well. Uh, it's great for putting on weight. Um, tube effects, no longer collected in sewage, does grow in sewage, but you don't, it's not, they don't get it from sewage, and anyway, it's gamma radiated, so there's not the bacteria. But 
it's just it's cultures anyway it's easy to digest it's an actual annelid it doesn't have the chitin on it it's just easier to digest in a way um, and they are feeding on a lot of most of these fishes if they're an insectivore they're going to be feeding on loads of worms probably anyway there's so many others though daphnia daphnia does have the chitin though it is another crustacean like brine shrimp uh, hit and miss it seems on actually digesting and you would unlike bloodworm you wouldn't wear, see whether it's an issue on the other end um, but there's all sorts like uh, mosquito larvae plankton what else um, rotifers there's just a whole wide selection of frozen foods I just go through um, oh I do uh, mysis krill you could just go through the only ones that I'd be risky uh, or wary about is like mussels, even krill, just because of the thiaminase that is in them. So I wouldn't feed high levels, and also mussels and um, heavy metals. You can't treat for heavy metals or um, thiaminase that you can't radiate it. You could cook it out the thiaminase, but you can't cook out the heavy metals. So the final thing about bloodworms is that people do actually gain allergies. To it or you can become allergic to it and it's rare but not ultra rare so you might be fine with it for a long time but then you might gain allergies and I'd recommend talking or looking up from information uh, from medical professionals when it comes to things like allergies uh, when I've seen it um, or people report having usually itchy eyes and swelling I've worked with someone who uh, I've worked with people who've had it um, but it's really rare um, and sometimes I think sometimes it is a bit so it usually comes with like the oil I guess some of them are because they're dead they're sort of broken up and you get sort of the waxy stuff and that can be quite itchy I think especially if you um, if you work with creams your skin suffers I think anyway but it can be quite itchy so sometimes just generally consider wearing gloves if you're handling bloodworm. Um, not handling it directly in general, maybe using pipettes or using um, other sort of things like spoons, um, cups, having its own defrosting cup, stuff like that, and rinsing it through. So just take the precautions. But anyway, uh, yeah, uh, in this video here, thank you for watching. If you like my videos, please comment, like, and subscribe, and goodbye.